All right, I'm joined now by Zimbabwean uh, nationals who are doing business in South Africa. We've got Kelvin Kanyoli, who is with Kenny Branding. We've got Munyarad Zimpofu, who is with Kingdom Blue. We also have uh, Christine Mutsa, who is the MD of Prestige Immigration Services, and Heda uh, Skinsima, who is the Director of Employment Law Practice at Cliff Decker Hoff Mayor, joining us via uh, video link. Thank you so much for making time for us. Uh, let's start with you, uh, Christine. What kind of services have you been offering to the Zimbabwean nationals who are holding these permits? Thank you, Clement. Um, so, Prestige Immigration Services, we are an immigration firm and we mainly help business holders who are operating businesses in South Africa or who want to come and operate businesses in South Africa. Mm -hmm. So, we've had in the past year or two, ever since the um, announcement of the discontinuation of the ZTP permit, a lot of ZTP business permit holders coming to us for help so they have been running their businesses on the ZTP business permit. Yeah. And now they want to move to the mainstream business visa. So we've been helping quite a lot of them move to the normal business visa. Obviously, there are requirements that they need to comply with now because the ZTP business permit allowed them to operate their businesses without necessarily complying with the basic requirements for a business visa. So, for example, the 5 million rand investment uh -huh. that is required mm -hmm. for a business visa or the 60% South African citizen employee um, uh, requirement. So, most of them were able to operate businesses for the past 10 years. Mm. But now with the discontinuation of the ZTP permit, because they want to continue operating their businesses, they have to move to that mainstream business visa which means that they have to meet those requirements. Yeah. And it's a challenge for most of them because businesses are mm -hmm. already operating. So we've been helping them navigate that transition yeah. from the ZTP permit to the mainstream visa and making them understand mm -hmm. how to work around some of those requirements which are not necessarily possible mm -hmm. to meet, yeah. seeing that their business is already operating. And Kelvin, what's been your experience um, of trying to move from uh, the ZTP business permit to that normal one? So my, my experience uh, goes back to the financial problems we were facing as a business using mm -hmm. the ZTP. Because we were facing, um, when, you, when you go to the banks trying to apply, apply for loans, sometimes you will get it, but you'll be given a higher uh, in, interest uh, rate. Yeah, higher interest rate mm -hmm. and payment. You have to pay according to the, to the length of your permit. If my permit was three years, they give me like three years to pay back the loan which will be high installment every month. So moving now, now, now that I've um, achieved to have the business permit, which is not the ZTP, mm -hmm. the things are getting smoother now, and it was all by the help of prestige. Yeah, yeah. Yes. And, and Munyarazi, I mean, what will be the impact if you guys stop operating and you have to close shop? I imagine there are people that you have employed in your business who are South African. Yeah, so uh, it does really have a serious impact, uh, especially with the ZEP permits that we're actually holding. It really doesn't give you the potential to explore the business. For example, the business, you can actually see it does have the potential to grow. But looking at what this ZEP uh, permit allows you to do, uh, you don't have the potential to grow the business at a pace, especially from like what my colleague have just said, uh, access to the financials. Mm -hmm. If you really want to uh, capacitate the business, so we were actually appealing especially to the government as well if they can actually review in terms of the conditions or uh, the requirements for uh, these um, uh, waivers or the, the requirements that they really want for the business. Mm -hmm. Because this business that we're actually running, you actually start the business from scratch and you find out we've got business that are actually employing more than 200 people. And for that kind of business, you really need to be uh, certain. Uh, because like currently for now, it has created uncertainties in the environment whereby people, mm -hmm. they are not really sure uh, in terms of uh, what is, what is going to happen on the next step. Like, for example, most of the clients, they've adopted the kind of uh, uh, wait and see situation, mm -hmm. which is mm -hmm. quite really difficult because people, they can't really make long-term decisions. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Heda, let, let's bring you in now. Yeah. From your observation, do you think that there's appetite from the Home Affairs Department to try and make you know, the necessary reforms when it comes to, to the requirements, seeing how stringent 
uh, the ZDP holders are, are saying they are. Levin, thank you for having me. It, it's, it's still to be seen whether or not the minister will be taking the judgment on appeal. Mm -hmm. In terms of, of what your, your panel has been saying in respect of what needs to be done, obviously the minister has to relook at the decision, has to then go out to, to the permit holders to allow them to make representation before a final decision has been made. That is obviously the, the consequence of the judgment. So it will all depend on whether the minister will determine or decide to take the judgment on appeal. If he doesn't take it on appeal, obviously he then needs to, to restart the process again, as Mrs. Fritz had said, and in order to do so, he would have to engage with all the affected persons. Okay. I, I want to um, now talk about something uh, different, Christine. So you've mentioned the requirements that are difficult for the businesses. What exactly is required um, of them? So if there's a mm. business owner in South Africa who wants to move from a ZEP business permit to a normal one, what is it that is so difficult that they, they can't move to the normal one? Okay, so for starters, to apply for a business visa, you need to have your business recommended by the Department of Trade and Industry. So you can't apply for a business visa without that positive recommendation. Mm. To get a positive recommendation, there are certain requirements that you have to meet. And the one big one is the 5 million rand investment capital, which you have to show that you have invested into the country. And that must originate from outside South Africa. So it can either be cash or uh, machinery and equipment or a combination. Then apart from the 5 million rand investment, there is proof that you are employing at least 60% South African citizen employees. 60%. 60%. So for ZTP permit holders, most of them, like uh, Munyarazi said, they built these businesses from scratch, from nothing. So they didn't invest the 5 million rand. So they don't have 5 million rand to prove. So that's already impediment number one mm. to migrate to a normal business visa. Then the 60% employee complement is that they should. If you come to us as Prestige, we tell you at least that you should meet because you've been operating already. Mm. So that one we have to tick. So those are the two main requirements. So for the 5 million rand investment, how we help the ZTP permit holders now is to apply for what is called a waiver mm -hmm. of that 5 million rand capital requirement. Mm -hmm. But to apply for that waiver, you need to prove that your business is feasible and you are contributing to the national interest. So you need to prove feasibility of your business that you've been operating on the ZTP permit and it is going to be feasible for you to continue operating your business beyond the expiry of the ZTP permit. The certain requirements that need to be met for feasibility, it's quite a big application, you know, such that if one doesn't know how to motivate feasibility of their business and contribution to the national interest, you might not get it. Because to get that recommendation from DTI, those are the two main requirements that have to be met. And with contribution to the national interest, apart from the 60% staff complement, you need to show that you've been doing businesses with other South African companies. Mm -hmm. Because the aim, you know, of moving from the ZTP permit to a business visa is to show that you are willing to continue contributing okay. to the South African economy. So it's not just about getting a visa so that you stay beyond the ZTP permit. We encourage our clients to continue contributing to the South African economy. So okay. that contribution to national interest is a very, very big point that we help in motivating for that DTI recommendation. All right, we'll, we'll continue this conversation after the break. Stay with us.
Welcome back. We've been reflecting on the consequences um, of the termination of the uh, Zimbabwean exemption permits. You heard from the High Court this past week where they're saying it was unlawful for the minister to make that termination without the necessary consultation. And now we're speaking to uh, some businesses uh, that operate in South Africa owned by Zimbabwean nationals who hold uh, these permits. Kelvin, I want to come back to you now. Uh, have you started exploring options available to you? I mean, if you ultimately do not get the permit, what's the option that's available to you? To close shop or to try and get... Uh, regularize your stay in, in other forms, but then you probably won't be able to run your business because you won't have that normal business permit. What yes. options are available for you? Okay, so I've already acquired now a, a new business permit, mm -hmm. uh, which, is, uh, which doesn't have to do now with this ATP. Okay. But before I got it, uh, my, uh, my options are already thinking of either going back home or migrating to another country, but... Um, also, the people who are working for us, we're now considering our job security, the locals who were there. Mm -hmm. Some of them already started leaving, thinking that this, the future is not looking good for them because our, our boss might not get his papers in order and the, the future for them was not going to look bad. So obviously, I had to think of all that. Um, my other option was either going back home and start the same business, mm -hmm. close down here, uh, but which was going to be a, a very costly uh, operation for, for the business to do, trying to move it from here to Zimbabwe or me going to any other country. Mm -hmm. yes. and, and for you, is that an option too? Because some people will, will say, well, um, is there no opportunity for you to also run just a successful business like that in Zimbabwe? And I think what the High Court found is that <coughs> with the minister, when the minister took this decision, he didn't properly consider the political and economic situation um, in Zimbabwe. So how do you respond to some people who say, is that option not available for you to say, maybe you can run an equally successful business in that country? Uh, I actually beg to differ on that one mm -hmm. because um, when we look at, uh, when we actually got these ZEPs, uh, we are talking about, it's more than a decade now, mm -hmm. people they have actually made their lives here in South Africa Mm -hmm. And uh, they have created business here, like what I've actually said initially to say, you know, uh, creating a, a business from scratch, you know, building it for more than 10 years. And we are now talking about something which is massive. But now, uh, with the, uh, looking at the element as well of uh, uh, creation of the employment, part mm -hmm. of it uh, contributing to the GDP in the country. So, yes, uh, w looking at uh, the nature of our business is actually established in Zimbabwe. We are also there here in South Africa. We are also there in Botswana. Mm. But uh, you wouldn't want to just uh, because of uh, the permits. So that was the outcry that we're actually having to say. Looking at the South Africans that, that are also benefiting out of this uh, cre uh, creation of employment, what is the government saying about it? Mm -hmm. So we're actually looking at it on a bigger scale, at the bigger picture. Yes, yeah. yes. Um, Heda, do you have any tips for, for some employers who have been trying to um, apply to regularize their stay so that we don't see a situation where businesses are going to uh, shut down and that's ultimately going to also affect uh, thousands of South Africans who are also um, employed by, by, by these uh, business owners. Well, Clement, the problem that we find ourselves, if we can use the word problem at the moment, is that we are in between two decisions. So what's happened now is the High Court has set aside the Minister's decision and says you have 12 months in which you now need to engage with, with the affected persons in order to determine what decision you are going to make in relation to the ZDP permits. So for now the employment relationship will remain and we will have to see, A, as I said earlier, whether or not the Minister will be taking the judgment on appeal. Alternatively, what the decision ultimately will be within 12 months and that will then determine from an employment perspective what needs to be done going forward. We had previously been advising carry on applying for your waivers or the alternative visas that, that are potentially available to, to the ZEP permit holders. However, given the fact that we have now an additional or a year from now, because remember it had been extended to, to the end of December, mm. that will then have to, that, that time will now determine what will happen going forward in terms of the employment relationship. Because as I say, we're sort of now hanging in the middle in the sense of, well, what do I do now as an employer? I, I would, I would suggest that, that one can 
carries on as normal and, and sees what, what ultimately comes from, from the minister. Yeah. Christine, I imagine there are some people who have made representations to the Home Affairs Department. I don't know if your organization has written to them to explain how rigorous um, and impractical, perhaps to an extent, this process is of getting that recommendation from uh, the Trade and Industry Department. Have you made that representation and have they said anything about how they can make that process smoother for business owners? So as Prestige, we haven't made any written representations to Home Affairs, but what we have tried is to help our clients get positive recommendations from DTI. So as I mentioned earlier, with a 5 million rand uh, capital requirement, you can get that waived. But to get that waived, there are certain motivations for that which is what we try to do for our clients. Because trying to argue and getting away with certain requirements mm -hmm. will take a little bit longer. And these are people already operating their businesses and they want to move forward. So we have to work with the department so that we help these people. So fortunate for us, um, as Prestige Immigration, we, we, we know how to assist our clients to work around the requirements. We are in collaboration with DTI. We speak where we're not sure of anything we do liaise with DTI and they advise us to say, okay, this is how best you can do this. So there is ways to get around it. It is legislated. Mm -hmm. Everything is above board. So you can get certain requirements waived with DTI. So what happens is for most CTP permit holders, getting the 5 million rent capital requirement waived is not an issue. We haven't experienced that. What is an issue is perhaps the contribution to the national interest and feasibility of um, the business because you realize, you realize that most of these people were operating their businesses without looking ahead, you know, beyond the CTP permits. So financials are not exactly healthy. Mm. So DTI would want to see that your financials are in order. You are not leaving from hand to mouth. Mm. Your business is actually making profit. You know, it is feasible for you to continue employing the 60% of African citizens and paying them and doing all of that. So that's why I said when we are looking at motivating an application to waive the 5 million rand and the contribution, there's a lot that goes into there. And um, um, Asset Prestige, we've managed to get positive recommendations, you know, by motivating the application well. Where we can see that it's not possible to get that 5 million rand waived or other requirements, we are very honest to say, you know what, mm -hmm. yes, you've been operating your business, on a ZTP permit, but in all honesty, it's not going to work because of one, two, three. Maybe try this other option. So I can give an example. We've got people on ZTP permits who've been operating uh, businesses. Um, there's some undesirable businesses mm -hmm. that are actually legislated. You know, so for example, the education sector that falls outside the Department of Trade and Industries uh, uh, jurisdiction. Mm -hmm. So they can't give a recommendation. So if you get a person on a ZTP permit who's running a school and wants to apply for a mainstream visa, then you have to assist and give them what options do they have because they won't get a positive recommendation from DTI. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Thank you so much, guys, for coming and joining us and helping us understand what the possible consequences could be. Mm -hmm. um, Heda, who was joining us via uh, our Zoom link, Munyaradzi, Kelvin, and Christina, I appreciate your time. We'll be back after this.